Welcome and thank you for joining me. This is Laurie of Laurie's Heirloom Sewing. And I know that we are in the middle of a um, jacket, McCall's number M4798. But I, I mentioned earlier that when all of my fabrics for Valentine's Day arrived, I would be halting production on the jacket and moving forward with the um, Valentine project. And the reason for that is, of course, this is January the 27th or 28th of 2020, which means that um, Valentine's Day is just a short distance away and I really need to get these done. Um, I'm making, the, I, I love to give handmade gifts to my friends and family over the, the Valentine Day day. I don't really want to call it a holiday. I've always loved Valentine's Day the most of all of the holidays, but um, that's because it's sort of a precursor to spring, and I love, love spring. So um, I think it's just a day of celebration and not so much a holiday. A lot of people wouldn't even think of getting Valentine's Day off from work, and they don't let the kids off of school. So, in that regard, it's just a day of celebration, but the thing is that I'm trying to get back to, um, my fabrics arrived, so I have the pink seersucker, and I have my little heart print that I just adore. I bought both of those on Amazon, and I will try to remember to link them down below. So this morning, I drew out a pattern on parchment paper. And I wanted to kind of give you an idea of um, how you might want to go about drawing a heart if you've not done that before. There are a lot of other ways that you could do this. One is if you have a, a, a coloring book or a book with a picture of a heart, um, you could trace that and then take it to a copy place and have it enlarged if your copy machine doesn't do that. Um, if you've not drawn a heart on a piece of paper before, the general concept is you want both sides to mimic each other. So rather than trying to draw a heart, you know, just on a piece of paper, see mine, mine isn't going to be even. That side is way bigger than this side. Um, I mean, I could try, but I don't think I'd ever get it actually symmetrical and I wanted it to be symmetrical for this project. So if you fold your piece of paper in half and then start here and move up and around and then <clears throat> back down to the bottom. When you cut this out you will have a basic, let me grab a pair of scissors, um, of course, this is paper, so I'm not using my fabric scissors. I'm using a pair of craft scissors that don't appear to have a brand name. I don't know. With When I had my, my daycare, I would just have like random scissors everywhere. I doubt these were daycare scissors because they're sharp and pointy, but you know. I also had my own children in school that had to have projects done. And then I always just kind of leave a little bit around like I can where I can still see my drawn line. Um, that gives me a reference if I need a seam allowance guide. Um, but when you unfold it, as you can see, you have this side and this side will meet up. I don't Generally, when I draw a heart for sewing purposes, I don't point the um, the bottom end. I'm trying to get this back on camera. Um, I usually leave that squared off because I know that when I'm sewing, I'm going to end up in that area um, where the fold line is uh, for my seam allowance. So, based on the way that you draw that heart, you will have a different size or a different style of heart. So as you can see, this one, 
I started a, a little bit lower down on this piece of paper but if you start up here and you just sort of curve around the whole shape will change based on how deep you make this right here. So as you can see, this heart and this heart are very different in their, the way they're styled. I think that, that's showing up. I mean, if you put this heart here, you can see it has a much deeper um, starting point. It's way down here, whereas this one isn't. So that's basically what I wanted to tell you about cutting out a heart. And I recommend that if you've not done it, or it's been a while since you have done it, that you um, practice on a few. I uh, had this, and as you can see, that's a very different looking um, heart, but it is still considered a heart. Um, I can't remember what I was using that for. Um, and this was a card that came in the mail. I like to use these because they're very, um, you know, they're cardstock. You don't have to throw them away. You can save them and use them for, you know, other projects. So, that is where I am there. I've got my heart cut out. And I've got my fabric. And, um... I haven't had any requests from my friends to make them something for Valentine's Day, so this will be um, the uh, the girl, my girls, and my sister uh, will each get a heart bag. And I'm just trying to clear off my sewing, my cutting table here, so I can cut these out. Okay, and the fun part is um, the buttons that I ordered, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll get to that in a moment, but hold on, because i got to move you over here. I've been looking at getting a tabletop um, tripod. I hope I can find one that will work really well for my current setup. Okay, so what we need for each bag is two lining pieces and two outer pieces. I'm using the seersucker as the lining. This is folded in half and I'm using the heart print obviously as the outside fabric. And then I'll need one strap for each of the bags, which in my case, I'm probably gonna end up using the seersucker, but I'm, oh, I thought that was a, that's cute. Um, I thought it was a thread and it's a part of the design. Okay. And I'm just gonna line these up, one on top of the other. You also will need some fusible interfacing. I'm gonna use some fleece, I want it to have a little bit of, um, you know, not, it doesn't have to be super stiff. This little bag actually is, you know, probably going to get used during the month of February and then put away and then brought back out again during the month of February. So it's not something that's going to get a lot of heavy use unless you're me, in which case, you know, you'd use it every day until it was just tattered and torn because I love Valentine's Day so much. Okay, so here I have some fusible interfacing that I think for each bag, um, I'm going to trim this up just a bit, but I think each bag I should have um, uh, one piece on each of the, of the sides. 
of interfacing. So if I don't have enough, which yeah, I don't think I'm going to, unless I piece it, which I could easily do. I've got lots of little pieces here I can just kind of fuse, which we all do. Okay, trim this. All right. Okay, but that that I definitely think you would want is you, you're definitely going to want some fusible interfacing on your project. Um, looking to see what I have. I've got quite a bit of different weights of interfacing. Um, Fusible, so no. Okay. Oh. Trying to find all my stuff in the ginormous mess of stuff. One of these days, I'm going to get my sewing room sorted out. It will probably happen about the time that we are getting ready to move to Alabama. <laughs> but you know, I'm that's okay. Oh, what is this? Is this feasible? No. Yes. Is this feasible? Hmm. No, this is not feasible interfacing. This is just fleece, which would be lovely, but I don't I don't think I want to use that. So, I think what I'm going to do is apply because I know I have several batches of this. So this is just a kind of a shirt weight, which while it's not very heavy, it would definitely give it a little bit of a um, stability, which is what you want. So one yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm kind of thinking and walking around at the same time, which <laughs> I know those jokes. Yes, I do. Um, if you make the joke, you have to come help me clean my sewing room. Not clean it, but organize it. That's the rule. Okay. Oh, wait. Let's see. Um, no. Goodness gracious. Holy moly me. I had... I, I purchased about four, yeah, about four bags of Pellon shirt weight fusible interfacing. Hmm. I know I didn't remove them all from the bags. And yet, for some strange reason, I can't seem to find the bags. So, all right. So I have a little bit more here. This is also fusible. So I'm just going to have to make do with what I've got as far as that goes. I'll figure that out. Um, I need my pattern, which we talked about. Okay, there we go. All right. So, my suggestion is that you put um, this looks like to me um, the hearts are primarily just sort of tossed 
but my eye is going to the one that has the bow. So I'm, I'm kind of making sure that I have that in my, my vision. And since I'm using the stripe, I also want to make sure that I have the stripes going um, the same direction for both pieces. I mean, obviously on a fold you're going to. And because it is a lining that you don't have to cut it, you don't have to fussy cut those stripes unless you just need to do that. I, I'm not going to be that fussy about it. Normally you would cut a stripe fabric if it were the outer fabric, you would cut it in a single opening so that you would know you were getting exactly the same cut every single time. But that's not necessary for my purposes um, in this project. Okay, I'm just trying to get all of my supplies. Okay, and I'm going to pin this down. You may have a, a you know, a, an issue with your, um, your pins going through this parchment paper. Uh, that's another reason why I don't use it for clothing, unless I'm going to use weights. And by weights, I mean, um, I usually just use my kitchen, um, the knives that we use when we eat meals, you know, those kitchen knives, not sharp ones, but the ones that come with your, with your set, your forks and spoons and knives. Okay. I want to make sure that I get these right on the fold exactly the same. So I'm kind of taking care to do that. Okay. I can't remember if I already mentioned that today our furniture is coming. I've, like I said, I've done a couple of videos and had to just start over again. And I can't remember which ones I've mentioned that in. Um, but once the furniture is here, um, I have a, a few boxes that I have to go through, but once it's here, I'll be able to uh, get that dealt with. As you can see, I'm struggling to get the pin to come back up through the, um, the parchment paper, so I'm not gonna keep doing that. Um, it's not working and I'm, I'm not gonna battle with that. 